Hey, welcome back. It's block party day. We have an engine hanging from a crane. We got a bell housing. We got a tranny. We have everything we need. Almost. Need a set of headers still. So we'll be uh, putting this back in over here. Okay, the engine's finally back in here where it belongs. This is a Jack Merkel Racing Engines built 327. It's got over 400 horsepower coming out of this thing on the dyno. So now that it's sitting here, we're uh, waiting to put the transmission in because we didn't have enough bolts to bolt the tranny up. I'm gonna get those tomorrow. And we have lots of other things to do, including all the clutch linkage too. So we could start on that. We have our little pivot bolt that's going to screw into the bell housing. We put that in right now, and then we got to wait for all the other stuff before uh, we could uh, continue. The transmission that's going in this thing came out of a friends of his, his 69 Camaro. He updated to like a five-speed or a six-speed in his car, so this is supposedly good. We're dumping the fluid on it. Actually, it looks pretty clean. There was a couple of bolts from the side cover that were missing, so I pulled one out to match it up and uh, replace that and uh, put some fresh fluid in it, and we will uh, throw this in the car. And hopefully this shifter will work for our application, otherwise we'll be hunting a new shifter down. It's got a Competition Plus Hurst. He's got the correct uh, handle for it, supposedly for the car, so we'll see if this works. We got our pivot bolt bolted on over there. And this clutch link, it looks like it goes at kind of a sharp angle. Hopefully this is right. Or we need to be in a different pivot bolt spot. All right, we'll get back to this later. Let's put the linkage together so we could see where it needs to be. Okay, we have the rest of our linkage. We gotta always kind of assemble this. There's a little plastic bushing that goes in this end. You push it in. Another one will go in behind this. And that whole assembly gets a clip. A big felt washer that sits over here. And then the nuts that go on the end. And that goes into the part that's on the frame. And the frame piece on this car is welded in from the factory. So if you're doing a four-speed swap, you need to get that bracket actually welded on. Later cars, Camaros, and other things, they have actually a bolt hole for you. Just bolt it in place. This one's going to have to get it welded and uh, welded in the right spot, too. That's the tricky part. Let's get this together. A socket works real good to push that uh, plastic bushing in. That is supposed to drop right in. As you could see, it does not. I'm going to have to... Uh, sand everything down in there i wouldn't have put the bushing in if i didn't know if it was going to fit right but too late now make it fit all right to make this work look what i had to go through i cleaned up the inside with a die grinder and a stone still doesn't fit so i took the ball stud i put it in a drill and chucked it up and then I'm using an abrasive uh, wheel while I'm spinning it to uh, polish it to a smoother, smaller size. Wow, the things we do to get reproduction parts to work. Unbelievable. Finally, that was a whole lot of work so that piece could go in the way it's supposed to go in. Reproduction parts, yes, they're available, you can get them, but you gotta make them work. Now, let me assemble this finally. Okay, we pushed the one uh, bushing in with a socket. Now the ball can go in. And the other piece can slide in. Let's see if I can do this go we use a socket to push the other bushing in also and now 
we will get the little clip in here. Use the screwdriver to push that in. And then you have your felt washer that's gonna go here. The, the bracket on the car is right th this way, squashed up against it. And then the nut and washer. Okay, after fighting with the linkage to get the pivot stud to fit inside the Z-bar, now we have it laying in the car and we have another problem. There's a place for the ball stud on the bell housing on this, but that is way too far backwards. And there's another one right over here. way too far forward we need one there and there is none there so what's our problem i ran the block number this is a corvette block from 1962 so they would have used the stud in the application here they never put a boss on the block there so now this whole engine is built what are we going to do about it uh fortunately the aftermarket as a uh, solution for this. I just gotta wait for it to get it. It's a bracket that will bolt on to, uh, to bell housing bolts in the rear and put that where we need it. So another, uh, another problem that we have to uh, wait for a part to fix. This is the block that's in the car, and here's a picture of the same block number with a later casting date with the right boss in it. The solution for our missing clutch stud arrived overnight. Express mail. So this is going to bolt in using some of the bell housing bolts, two of them in the back, and it puts the pivot exactly where we need it. There's only uh, one minor issue. There is some casting sticking out on the block that's kind of in the way. So uh, we also need to lay the headers in here. So take the engine back out again. So we'll make a clearance the block over there for this little bracket. We just have to shave a little bit of like casting seam off and uh, reposition our hangers so we could uh, drop the engine back in and have the header bolts empty so we could bolt in the new set of headers that also arrived so we placed the engine in here because i didn't want it hanging around on the crane and it's kind of good that we did because i wouldn't have found this problem out till after i was trying to fit the headers in too so we'll get this resolved now all right engine's back out we'll just kind of lower it down close to the floor and do a bunch of little things we need to do and uh hopefully get this back in quickly Okay, now we can attack the uh, castings on the block so we can get this bracket to fit flush. We also have to take a closer look at our pivot bolt in the clutch uh, for the clutch fork. I don't think this is the right one. We had two different lengths and this one may be too short. I gotta pull that back out and uh, put in a little bit longer one. And also when we're here, we have a plug to fill this in we're not going to use the road draft tube in the car it's already been plugged off internally also so uh we got to put a plug in there and we'll also put our fitting in for our oil pressure gauge while we're sitting here and then i have to think of any other things we need to do before it goes back in that should be it all right that's sitting nicely now a little shave and a haircut with a die grinder to, just to knock that casting off. So we could bolt this back in place now. And uh, we, swept, we swapped out our pivot bolt, put the longer one in that we need. And we could uh, drop this back in. This was a lifesaver. Otherwise I was gonna have to make something up myself. I've seen pictures of people fabricating their own, but there you go, problem solver. I'll we'll bolt it up and fit in place. Be nice to your neighbors. My neighbor Bob came over 
And my friend Joe stopped by and gave me a hand swinging this thing in. So it's always good to uh, be good to your neighbors and they'll be good to you. So the engine's sitting in here right now. We have our uh, clutch linkage bracket here. Looks like it's going to work, but it did present us with some other problems. The stud is now sticking out a little bit further towards the frame rail than it normally would in the car. And the stud that they that came with the bracket was this one. And you could see how much it's sticking out. So we had the other one that we had gotten. So just a tiny bit shorter overall. So we went with this one. It'll get it in a little closer. This is very close to the bottoming out on the bracket. And I actually went inside and cleaned up. There was a little notch down in there that prevented this from going in a little further. So we kind of cleaned that up to get a, we cleaned up that notch in there to get this to sit more flush. So now we could bolt this onto the bracket. And I also took an adjustable wrench and closed it up to fit onto the frame side bracket and I actually bent it out a little bit that way so we'll have enough clearance to fit everything in. I had it in it looks like it's gonna work now we just got to put everything together for the last time fit our little felt washer in that's gonna go over here and then once it's in place you uh, grease the grease fitting to fill this cavity with grease to grease the linkage so that'll be the last step. Now, let's get it back in there for the last time, hopefully. Finally hooked up. Got to hook up some of the rods still, but we got movement here. It'll squeak. That'll go away when we grease it. That was a whole lot of work just to make parts that are supposed to fit work. Okay, we got the rest of the linkage assembled down here. It is a small spring that goes from the fork to the Z-bar. And there's also a return spring that goes from the Z-bar down to a tab on the firewall right over there. The trouble is, there is no way that that spring will make it there. So I have a little piece of wire, heavy duty wouldn't call it wire, I'd call it actually around the stock that we have to kind of make an extension for it. So we will stretch it out to what we think it needs to be and then bend that. What I have on there now is not uh, giving it enough tension. So let's figure that out. This will be my extension. If I need to make a different length, I'll make it a different length. All right, the little bracket that I made, instead, I'm attaching it onto that hole in the frame. That little sheet metal uh, thing is just welded onto the floor. It's actually flexing when you're stepping on the clutch pedal. So we'll try to move it over there and see how that will work. And we still have to uh, adjust our clutch for the proper feel, but it should be pretty close. Okay. Clutch linkage is all sorted out, and now we have a whole new set of problems that we have to uh, tackle. One of them is right here. Clearance issues from this uh, steering shaft, which is not in the stock location because this has a steering rack in it. So what are we going to do with that? It's going to get uh, creatively dented and... The shifter that was on the transmission, the transmission is currently in the car right now, will not work with this application. So we have a shifter coming, uh, possibly have to take the transmission mount out and relocate uh, some brackets that are bolted through it or on it. But uh, that's the uh, next step. And then we could continue just hooking up everything else over here. We have our oil pressure line that could get hooked up. We have a thermostat housing. We need to get a thermostat. I think a carburetor we're still waiting for too. And a bunch of other things. It's getting there. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and uh, subscribe too. That would help me also. Thanks. Everything good up there?
Whoa, that was a close one.